Shri Garubhyo Namaha. Shri Ashok Singhalji, Shri Mohan Bhagavat Rao, Shri Praveen Togadia, and the most wonderful group of participants, teachers, uh, media people, educators. I don't think there has been a comparable group together in any one place in the world at any time, at least not in this century. I am very humbled to be before you. Uh, I, it is very interesting. The first article I wrote on Hindu thought was called Arise Arjuna, and it was published in the 25th anniversary issue of Hindu Vishwa for the 25th anniversary of the Vishwa Hindu Parishad 25 years ago. <clears throat> so I only hope I have at least 25 more years for this uh, work and organization. And I would also say that 2014, we also do some Jyotish, is a major watershed year in the history of India and the most important year since 1947. <laughs> and it is a much more auspicious, happy, expansive and developing and aware year than 1947. And it is a year in which India has proclaimed not just its political independence, but its intellectual and spiritual independence. <laughs> not only from the shadow of colonial rule, but the shadow of foreign thought, foreign influences, and of course the forces that have been trying to undermine the traditional dharma of this country and this entire world for some time. Uh, I would also say I've been asked to speak on the Hindu response to Western intellectual challenges as a topic. I think what we are seeing here is the best Hindu response to Western intellectual challenges that we have also seen and covering all the main areas, and very important areas. I remember 25 years ago, there was not much of a Hindu media, or a Hindu concern about media events, and now look at what is happening. The Hindu organizations have the best understanding, they're developing their own media, and they are changing the media of India and the world. There was a whole issue here I want to uh, move into. And the first thing I want to say is sometimes people think that Hindus aren't very intellectual people. The fact is Hinduism has the world's largest, oldest intellectual tradition covering all aspects of life, every aspect of art, literature, science, social thought, everything extending to all the Vedas, Puranas, Upanishads, Mahabharata, Yoga Shastras, Dharma Shastras, Ayurveda, Jyotish, Vastu, etc. No other country, culture in the world has this comparable intellectual tradition. We always emphasize the cultivation of buddhi or the higher intelligence. And we emphasize that both for spiritual issues and also dealing with the world. Vedas have an important statement. They say Brahma and Kshatra must always go together. Brahma as the spiritual knowledge and Kshatra not just simply as ruling the world but as the view or understanding of the world. So that alliance needs to arise again and that alliance is coming up once more again. Now, actually, Hindus have had a profound effect and a profound uh, intellectual response to all the cultures they've come into contact with through history. They've been taking the best and mostly rejecting the worst, although we can't say this current century has yet digested all these influences. And we need to understand that uh, India and Hindus in general have been under a very significant intellectual attack or challenge that is still going on today. 
Uh, many of these challenges are misinformed. Uh, they're aimed at cultural dominance or religious conversion, colonial, missionary, Marxist, and the worst come from within India itself and from within the media and educational system of India. And we find that Hindus actually are much more respected and regarded in the West and in the United States than they are in India today. In the West today, Hindus are known to be the most affluent and educated of the communities and to have the greatest uh, spiritual orientation. So people find that Hindu is a positive word. It's only in India where we find that this Hindu word is still not positive, although it is getting more positive. So there is a vast Hindu response to all aspects of culture and Western thought that we need to uh, go back to, embrace, and develop. Uh, we have so many teachers from Vivekananda, Ramatirtha, uh, Dayananda, Aurobindo in the pre-independence time. And we have so many in the uh, t recent times, Dean Daya Upadhyaya, Swami Chinmayananda, Swami Dayananda, Ram Swarup and Sita Ram Goel have left a very important legacy. And this extends to various Western groups and Western Hindus, including Hinduism today, our friends and swamis here. And the Hindu American Foundation, which is a young Hindu group of lawyers, is doing very great work uh, in India. So these things are going on, and they need to develop more. I even remember once when Gandhiji was asked about Western civilization, he said it would be a good idea. <laughs> now, in one of my books some years ago, I raised the challenge or the need for an intellectual kshatriya for the protection of the Hindu dharma. And I also see that here today. But we also need to develop it further. And let me just explain a little bit about what that is. A new need for new Hindu thinkers who understand the intellectual challenges of the high-tech age, trained in modern media and tools of the internet and social media, Hindus need to understand how information is presented in the internet and mass media and learn to use these tools to defend the higher dharma. Otherwise, they may lack the right weapons to fight this information war. Hindu thinkers should also be trained in older traditions of Vedanta, yoga, and dharmic thinking of ancient and modern times and be able to present an authentic and positive image of Hindu Dharma at a national and global level. They should be skillful in language, dialogue, and debate, not apologetic and compromising. <laughs> Satyam eva jayate. We need to emphasize the truth. They should emphasize the power of viveka, or yogic discernment as their guiding light. Uh, just as we need discrimination as to the food we buy, the jobs we take, the relationships we have, we need even more discrimination in religious and cultural matters. We can just not say everything is the same, there's no difference, and our choices don't count. We need that viveka or discrimination that we pursue excellence we go to the highest. We are not just going to what I would say the least common denominator. We are seeking the supreme truth and we are upholding teachings that take us to the highest and we should be proud of that. And we should be willing to share that with the world as a whole. We honor, we respect pluralism, uh, we are tolerant, uh, we believe everybody should be able to find the truth in their own way. But we honor our tradition, our teaching, and our gurus. We think it is a great path and approach. We need to share that with the world. I run into many people throughout the world who would be happy to become Hindus, learn more about Hindu Dharma, but is not being directly taught or given to them. 
So they take up the Hindu Dharma in some degree through yoga, Ayurveda, some other discipline, which keeps them in a limited space. So they are also looking for the greater Hindu Dharma. And the Hindu Dharma has universal value. It has value, as you see, not only for Hindus of every country and culture, but also for non-Hindus. No one is born in one religion or another. We are all born into the Dharma. We are all sharing the same Atma or higher self. When people ask me as a Western Hindu what religion they should follow or you know, if they can practice yoga and follow their religion or whatever it is, my response is very simple. Seek or follow that teaching which takes you to the highest truth regardless of where it came from and don't try to defend a tradition or teachings that don't do that for you. This truth is available for everyone. So this awakening is happening in India today in 2014. And it is my hope that this awakening will now move globally through all of our brothers and sisters, not only in yoga traditions and uh, other, you know, the, the pagans, Yazidis, whatever you want to call them. These are all our brothers and sisters seeking our help and I believe that this VHP event today is a monumental event for Hindus everywhere, and it should be shared with Hindus everywhere. It can become the blueprint, the foundation, or the paradigm for many such events and conferences, either as a whole or either the separate conferences of the group involved. The Hindu buddhi and its new Viveka awakens today and we have to honor all the individuals, all the teachers. Swami Vigyanananda has lived up to his name. So I know my time is up here, but it's been my great honor to be here. And the light of this gathering, the Shakti of this gathering, the Sangha Shakti will awaken the Sangha Shakti for all Hindus everywhere. That is my prayer, but I think that is also the reality. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Hariyo.